Tom Izzo and Michigan State on to the Sweet 16. Tom Izzo's 15th Sweet 16 appearance and first since 2019 as they knock off the two seed in the East. Marquette 69 to 60. Tyson Walker, a transfer from Northeastern, 23 points in this game. But how about Matty Sissoko with a couple of big blocks down the stretch to deny Marquette in the end as Michigan State keeps on dancing, representing the Big Ten. And how about this stat? Tom Izzo now 24 and 7 when he has one day of prep in the NCAA tournament. Uh, nobody out prepares Tom Izzo. Mr. March indeed moves his team on. All right, in studio here with 24-7 Sports Director of Scouting, Adam Finkelstein. And Adam, uh, I want to take you back to the block late in the game. Yeah. Uh, what did you see there? Gene Steratore uh, was talking about how it was simultaneous. What did you see? Did you think it was goaltending? Did you think it was a clean block? It doesn't get any closer. I'm glad I'm not the guy with the, the whistle in my mouth because you're, you're darned if you do and darned if you don't. I mean, that's just one of those things. It's, but I, I think the block in and of itself is, in, is, is symbolic of the real story, and that was Michigan State's defense inside the paint tonight. Marquette is a team that normally shoots 59% on two-point field goals. Tonight, they were 9 of 25. So Matty Sissoko, not only with two big blocks down the stretch, but making himself a major presence on the defensive end throughout the course of all 40 minutes in the game. And in my mind, that was the story. Also a story was the turnover margin, right? Uh, Marquette led the Big East in forced turnovers, 16 per. Uh, they themselves had 16 turnovers in this game. Defensively, what did Michigan State do to this team? Because this offense for Marquette carried them to the Big East regular season title and to the tournament title. Well, they had very active hands. They, they were making plays in the defensive end. But I think another thing here is, is rhythm and confidence. If you were watching that game, you heard that Shaka Smart led his team through a breathing exercise in a timeout with three minutes left in the game. That, to me, is indicative of the fact that they were a little riled up. You know, the NCAA tournament, it's hard to get the, the better, can get the best of your emotions. And I think Marquette just never got into the ideal offensive rhythm. I think part of that was Michigan State's defense. But again, part of that is just the fact that they weren't converting inside the paint like they usually do. 38% from the floor is what Marquette shot. Um, Michigan State was 2 of 16 from beyond the arc. 2 of 16 and they won the game. How the heck do you win the game? When only making two threes, you do it with defense. And I mean, th this was th this game was a grind. And and this was this wasn't about who scored the most points. This was about who got the most stops. And Michigan State got the most stops. And in particular, down the stretch, Marquette had two different chances to tie the game at the free throw line. They missed both of those free throws. And Michigan State responded in a big way. That Hauser three was absolutely huge. Points in the paint, 32 to 16. I mean, that that also tells the story. A lot of numbers tell the story in this game. But again, the storyline that, that stands out to me here is the preparation of Tom Izzo. 24 and 7 now, and he's got at least one day of prep in the NCAA tournament. Well, he's got some practice. Yeah. You know, it's like, and, and remember, it's a finite window. Mm -hmm. So I think part of that is, is being able to simplify the process because a lot of these coaches get obsessed with the preparation. And if you've got to squeeze all that into 24 hours, you might as well have Mr. Michigan State doing it because he's, uh, he's been down this road once or twice. Most regional semifinal appearances by a Big Ten head coach passing the great Bob Knight. Uh, now 15 for Tom Izzo. Shaka Smart has led a team to the Final Four, took VCU back in 2011. He was trying to do the same here with Marquette. And really, we talked about throughout the season how much of a fit this was a good fit for Shaka Smart at Marquette compared to what happened at Texas. And the fit at Marquette turned out to be pretty darn good. They won 29 games. Again, regular season champs in the Big East, tournament champs in the Big East. What do you have to say about the job that Shaka Smart did at Marquette here? I think this is as good of a fit as advertised. You know, sometimes these, these narratives, the stories that are told, sometimes they're, they're creations. This is no creation. This is a great, great fit. Not only is he going home, but he's going to a place where he can be himself. And doing a breathing exercise with three minutes left in the game is who Shaka Smart is. I mean, you know, quick story. I, I interviewed him during COVID. We were talking about basketball. The conversation went to meditation and breath work because that's who he is on a daily basis. And he gets to embrace that par part of his personality here. And this team really bought into that. It had shades of like the Phil Jackson type teams there uh, back with the triangle and stuff like that. I, I just think it's a terrific fit. Shaka Smart's home. And he had a absolute magical season 
doing things exactly the way he wanted to do. Yeah, it. heck of a season for Marquette. Uh, come up short here as they try to get to the Sweet 16. Uh, but it is Michigan State moving on, holding the banner for the Big Ten right now as one of two remaining Big Ten teams in the bracket. So now they move on to Madison Square Garden to MSG where Tyson Walker, he's from Queens, from New York. He's excited about going to play in front of his friends and family. And now you got Kansas State. You got Kansas State, Jerome Tang in his first season at Kansas State. Picked to finish last in the Big 12. Here they are in the Sweet 16 against the veteran in Tom Izzo. This is going to be an interesting matchup. What are your initial thoughts here in Kansas State and Michigan State? Well, it's two teams who weren't supposed to be here. Because remember, at the beginning of the season, everybody thought Michigan State was going to be way down. They were expecting Max Christie to come back and kind of be the focal point of this year's team. He decided to be one and done last year's draft, didn't get picked in the first round. Michigan State may not have an NBA player on their roster this year. But what they've got is a lot of guys, high character, gritty players who buy into that culture that Tom Izzo has established. So they have exceeded expectations as well as Kansas State. And remember, Kansas State picked last in the, I think it was 10th in the league. Jerome Tang had that quote, said, well, I guess 10 teams from the league are going to the NCAA tournament. So two teams that were not supposed to be here, but have absolutely gotten the most out of their individual parts. Tom Izzo and the Michigan State Spartans marching on into the Sweet 16, his 15th. Sweet 16 appearance most by a Big Ten coach as they knock off Marquette 69 to 60 in the East region. Hey, you want uh, more March Madness Live? Download the March Madness Live app to stream every game from your phone, your tablet, your computer, all of the action. Sweet 16 Thursday and Friday all the way to the Final Four and the National Championship. Keep it locked. Much more ahead here on CBS Sports HQ is we continue our coverage of the NCAA tournament. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.